And integration with Google Sheets is one of the most requested features for Switchboard Canvas. And um, I'm pleased to tell you that uh, we have implemented an integration with Sheets. And uh, in this video, I just want to talk you through uh, how that works. Um, so the first thing we do is we log into Canvas and we come to the profile screen. And here you can connect Canvas to your Google account. We just click the connect to Google button, choose the account and we allow uh, the permissions. This is just read-only uh, permissions to Google Sheets. So uh, once that's done, what we're going to do is come in and create a template. For now, I'll just call this one Sheets Test. And in this demo, what I want to do is put some data into Google Sheets that represents um, a, uh, an e-commerce uh, operation. I've got four images of some sneakers here, and I'm just going to make uh, a template that uh, pulls in this data from Sheets and creates images, uh, product ad images from uh, these sneaker images here. Um, so what I want to do is make uh, this a story size. And I'm going to come in and make the background for this sort of dark gray, something like that. Okay, so the first element I want to add is the image of the actual product. And I've uploaded uh, one of uh, the images here. I'm going to pin this to edges. I'm going to set a padding of 150 pixels um, around the edge. And I'm going to contain this uh, within the bounding box. And I'm going to call this product. Um, OK, the second thing I want to do, actually, before I do that, I'm just going to set the background opacity of this uh, to 0. Next thing I want to add is um, the model or the name of the name of the shoe. I'm going to set the text color here to white. And I really couldn't think of any good sneaker names, but I'm going to go for something ridiculous like <laughs> jumpers. <laughs> One, don't ask. Choose a better font for this. I'm going to come down and choose, um, let's say, uh, Beavis is always a good one, actually. And I'm going to increase the letter spacing a bit. I'm going to set the maximum font size for this uh, text element to 65. And I'm also going to pin this to the right hand side, 100 pixels from the right hand side. And then I'm just going to bring this down and sort of position it above the, above the image. OK, so that's the model element. Now I'm going to do Control shift v to duplicate this. I'm going to duplicate this. For the price, I'm going to put a fake price in, select this, drop this down, and just put this uh, below the image. OK, so those are our three uh, dynamic elements. The last thing I would just want to add is a logo for this uh, sort of fake brand. Um, so I'm going to pin this to edges. I'm also going to set this to 150. Shift Enter to copy the 150 down to all of the edge sizes, positions. And also contain this uh, within the bounding box and then just resize the top down. So, so well, something like that, just to position that. Uh, we can call this logo. I'm also going to change the background opacity of this one to zero and then save the uh, the template. OK, so heading over to Google Sheets, um, I've got a blank um, document here. It's ready to go. Anybody that's used the Airtable integration, this works pretty much exactly the same. The column headers are in a certain format. That is what gets picked up by Canvas uh, when the images are created. And um, so what we'll do, the first column for the model of shoe, I'm going to put model, colon, and then text. And this is basically targeting the model element and the text property. So this is what will be overwritten when uh, or specified when this image is created. And I'm going to do the same for the price uh, column. And thirdly, the product element, I want to target the URL property. Now, my uh, shoes, 
I've uploaded to AWS S3. That's where these images are being hosted uh, right now. And what I'm gonna, going to do is grab this uh, URL, save me having to remember it and type it. And I've got four, so I'm just gonna duplicate this three times. Come in here, they're all sequentially numbered, so I'm just gonna rename this sneakers1234. Okay, so now we can specify more of the data that will be used to create these images. So again, um, jumpers1, actually let me make this capital, jumpers1, uh, this was 129. What else did I have? Airplay 250. <laughs> Again, no idea. Uh, moon boots, I thought that was particularly good. Let's have moon boots. These are super expensive at 229. And then grass roots, 100. 99 cheap as far as sneakers go. Okay, so we have the template and we have the Google Sheets file set up. Um, the column headers are targeting the elements and the properties within uh, the element. Now the next piece is to look at the um, request that we will send um, to Canvas to produce um, these four images. Now, to target the Google Sheets document, we need a couple of pieces of information. One is the document ID and one is the sheet name. The document ID um, is actually up here um, on the, the URL. It's a part of the URL. It's a part of the, uh, the address here that you can find in the address bar. And if we select um, the address bar and then double click inside, somewhere inside this sort of longish uh, alphanumeric ID, it will sort of select what that ID is and we can copy that and then come back into the request and paste it in to the document ID. So it's this long sort of alphanumeric string that identifies what the Google Sheets document is. Uh, now the sheet name thankfully is a little more obvious, it's the name of the sheet um, that contains the data that you're targeting, so in there we can just put sheet one. Then the last thing we need is a webhook. Now the webhook is a URL um, that will be um, called when the processing of these images has finished. So in this case, it's going to create four images and then the results of uh, that processing will be sent to this webhook. From there, you can take that information and do something else with it. Um, so what I'm going to use for um, the webhook in this example is over on Pabli. So on, over on Pabli, um, I'm just going to create a new workflow and I'm just going to call this Google Sheets test. And the trigger here um, at the top of this workflow in Pabli, I'm just going to specify webhook. And it gives me a webhook URL. And this is hosted at Pabli. I can copy this and when I've copied it, it's now waiting for a response. It's waiting for something to be sent to it to test. So I'm going to paste that same webhook uh, into uh, my uh, Canvas request. And then I'm going to send um, this over to Canvas. So we can see that it's been a successful request and record submitted is four. There's four images to be created. It read four images from the Google Sheets document. If I come back to Pabli, um, we can see that there are four records um, which tell us um, that four images were created. Now, specifically, we want to look at, and if we were using Pabli to continue with a workflow, these are the pieces of information that we would pull out. It's really the, uh, the URL, the generated URL uh, for each image. So there are uh, four of uh, these in this, uh, in this response. If we just have a look at this third one, we can see the image grassroots $199. Uh, we can see the image that was created. So from this workflow in Pabli, we could do whatever we wanted with the images. We could send them to uh, Dropbox or Google Drive or, or do something else as part of a, a, a larger workflow uh, for image generation, post them to social media, that kind of thing. So I hope you've um, 
uh, learned something from that. And um, by all means, please reach out and make more uh, suggestions as to what would be useful as a additional functionality for the Google Sheets integration. Um, but uh, thank you for your time, and we'll see you on the next one.